the war gamers today want to talk about the remora stealth drone um in the past it used to be a really mobile stealthy flyer uh and it still maintains some of those attributes but not all of them and we'll get into uh what those are what's its strengths and weaknesses in a moment but before we do i want to say thanks for watching uh, if you like this video go ahead and hit the like button the subscribe button and the notification bell that way you don't miss any my upcoming unit reviews or battle reports for eighth edition all right, so uh, we're going to be working out of the Imperial Armor Index Xenos book here. Uh, and this book in particular has gotten a lot of FAQs, so keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, so what is the general role of the Remora? Well, you basically have two options. You can either use it as a late game objective grabber or as an escort to a Cold Star commander suit. So we'll talk about exactly how that plays out, but let's start with the general profile. So it has a movement of 20 to 30 inches, so it's pretty darn fast. Uh, weapon skill of 5 up, ballistic skill of 4 up, so it doesn't have that standard drone stat line. Uh, strength 4, toughness 5, 3 wounds, 2 attacks, 6 leadership, and a 4 up save. So some of these attributes really make it seem like a bunch of fire warriors strapped together. Uh, it comes equipped with uh, two long barrel burst cannons and uh, can be taken in units of up to six. So, um, so yeah, uh, a long barrel burst cannon is pretty similar to uh, what it was before. It's 36 inch range, heavy four, uh, strength five, AP nothing, one damage. So. Uh, each one of these guys is able to put out four shots uh, at ballistic scale four up. And then it can uh, take two seeker missiles each. Each one can take two seeker missiles. So, um, yeah. Uh, then it has four basic abilities. First is that it's airborne, so it can fly, which is good. That's similar to how it worked before. It has a hard to hit rule, meaning that it's minus one to hit. And that's really all it has in terms of being uh, hard to hit. It used to be that it was a flyer, so you had to you had to uh, snap shoot at it, and then it also had a stealth save, uh, so it had an improved improved cover save. But uh, that's not a thing anymore. So it's just minus one to hit. There's no stealth field, anything like that. Um, it has a target lock ability, which has been FAQ to be. Basically just a, a built-in target lock. You don't have to pay for it. It's just like a, a standard ability on the drone. Um, and then it has this thing called Stealth Protocols, which is <laughs> is kind of their new, their new stealth field, but it's not actually a stealth field at all. It just allows them to deep strike. So they're, they're still called stealth drones, but there's actually nothing stealthy about them other than the fact that they can deep strike, which... You know, is an important distinction, but uh, it's a drastic change in feel from how they functioned before. So they can deep strike, but there's no there's no stealth save or anything like that uh, involved. Uh, they have the drone keyword, uh, fly keyword, sep keyword, pretty standard stuff. But like I said, you have two main strategies on how to use these guys, and um, if you want to use it as a late game objective holder, basically don't take seeker missiles on it. Take it in a unit of one or two, keep it in reserve, deep strike it on turn three, and then have it go crazy grabbing objectives as, as much as you can. If you want it as a escort to your Cold Star Commander, take seeker missiles on it, start it out on the board, or deep strike it um, at the end of turn one or, or something like that if, if there's nothing that you really want to use those seeker missiles on right away. But uh, have these guys hang out with your Cold Star Commander, and I think it's actually a really synergistic relationship. They work out a lot better together than apart, and it actually makes the Cold Star Commander a lot more viable than it would be otherwise. It solves a lot of issues that we have with the Cold Star just because it's a character that's moving faster than everything else, and that's an easy way to actually have that Cold Star Commander end up in, in a tough situation. The drones, on the other hand, can keep up with the Commander and alleviate a lot of those issues. So the drones go with the Cold Star Commander. They offer a, you know, a distracting unit to the Commander. Other you know, opponent units, enemy units, can't fire at the Commander so long as the drones are the closer target, so you can kind of surround the commander with a couple drones and, and be fine that way. 
and then the commander takes a drone controller to make these guys hit on three ups which is really nice so that's that's um you know that's a pretty good deal uh having you know eight shots per remora hitting on threes at 36 inch range that's that's pretty effective and so i think uh, they work out really well together. Notably, they don't have savior protocols, and savior protocols are something that are on the drones themselves, and so it's it's a little nebulous in the way that it's presented in the um, in the actual index on how that works. But as far as I can tell, the savior protocol special ability is on the drones themselves. So you wouldn't be able to actually use the savior protocols as presented in this book to deflect wounds from a commander onto their Mora drones, which I think is an oversight. Maybe they, maybe they did that intentionally, maybe not. I don't know, but um, that's kind of too bad. But either way, you still get a benefit for having this unit as a shield in front of the commander. Um, they're still going to have to shoot at it first, so that's fine. Um, yeah, so that's that's basically it. I and I think those are two very viable strategies. I think the commander one is better though. I think if you're using it with a commander, you're getting more bang for your buck, and it's really a niche that is needing filling more than the like game objective grabber thing. You could do that with other units, so you can't do that as much for the cold star. However, in comparing the value of this to a different unit. Uh, it's not exactly, you know, it's not exactly a 100% pro list and zero cons list. So if we compare this to 10 Fire Warriors, which are about the same points cost, they're going to produce a higher volume of fire, both at distance and especially at short range. So if you're going for, you know, volume of fire, having more Fire Warriors instead of a single Remora is going to be the way to go. You're going to get more shots out that way. But they are hitting on fours and not on threes if they're with a commander. And they also um, don't have as high of toughness. The Remora has toughness five. Uh, Fire Warriors have toughness three. So that can make a difference when you're fighting, you know, just against basic bolters. Um, and most importantly, Remoras are way more mobile. So, you know, if you're going to take Remoras, don't take them for their offensive capabilities. Yes, they do have a couple Seeker missiles, but those are... Those are one use only things. I love seeker missiles, but they're not something that are going to sell me on a remora. Um, what's going to sell me on a remora, and the reason why you should bring a remora as is as a mobile uh, escort for your cold star commander, or as a like game objective holder. And again, I think the escort role is a more viable option. So that's basically it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, and of course, happy wargaming.